In this recipe, I'm creating a marble glaze where all the ingredients are accessible. I've developed a glaze that enables you to achieve a really shiny result without having to use mirror glaze or neutral glaze, which is sometimes really hard to source, particularly in small quantities. I'm going to colour the glaze with different colours to showcase a marble effect. Firstly, I'm going to pre-soak the gelatin in a bowl of cold water. Alternately, you can use the gelatin solution, which already has the water weighed up before it's added in. So just one sheet at a time to ensure that it's well hydrated and I'm using a gold gelatin. To get a really nice shiny glaze, you do require a lot of water as a base. So the water is what is going to reflect light and give you that really beautiful gloss and shine. So we're not gonna set the glaze completely with chocolate, but we are gonna add some white chocolate in to give us some flavor. We're actually gonna set it with the gelatin. To start the recipe, in a saucepan, you're going to place a water using some caster sugar or super fine sugar. I've got some liquid glucose here, which has 60% sugar and 40% water. The liquid glucose itself is derived from wheat. It doesn't have any gluten. An alternative to the liquid glucose is to use a light corn syrup. We're going to add that in and what this does is it helps to give us shine in the glaze, it gives us elasticity, it also helps us to avoid the sugar recrystallizing once we've dissolved it. I've just heated that up in the microwave a little bit to make it really liquid so it's easy to scrape out. I'm going to bring that to a boil and what I'm using to replace a neutral glaze in this recipe is I'm using an apricot jam. Now this is a really cheap apricot jam that has no pulp of fruit in there at all, but it's got the perfect setting capacity and texture that we require. So just purchase the cheapest apricot jam that you can find for the recipe. If you do have neutral glaze, you can replace the apricot jam with a neutral glaze and it'll work exactly the same. Now that that's come to a boil, I'm going to add in the apricot jam and I'm going to bring it back to a boil. So just scraping that in. Just going to turn the heat down a little bit so we don't evaporate too much water. If you do evaporate a lot of water going through this process, you may need to adjust the glaze at the end by adding some additional water in if it's too thick. The apricot jam doesn't really impart a strong flavour. You will get a mild taste of the apricot, but certainly nothing strong enough to change the flavours of the cake that you glaze. If you have a few smaller lumps of jam, don't try to continue to boil it to boil them out. You will emulsify them with the rest of the glaze once you emulsify it with a stick blender. I'm going to take it off the heat. Add in the condensed milk. I'm going to add in the pre-soaked gelatin. So take the gelatin out and squeeze off any excess water. When you add the gelatin in, make sure that the base of the glaze is not too hot. If it's above 80 degrees, the gelatin will start to lose some of its setting capacity. We'll mix that in, it will separate at this stage, but it will come back together once we pour it over the white chocolate. I'm just using a standard Calabar white chocolate. I'm gonna pour the base of the glaze over the top while it's still hot. And then I'm gonna emulsify it with a stick blender. Because of the apricot jam as the base in the glaze, the glaze is going to be really quite creamy in color. It's not even going to be remotely close to white. If you're making a red glaze, you would add a solid red color at this stage with no problems at all. It may distort some colors like green or blue and change the base color slightly. 
I'm going to add some white titanium to the glaze as a base and then do two other colours as well. But you can simply just colour the glaze as it is without adding the titanium. You've got the option of adding a liquid colour, a gel or a powder, an oil based powder or a water based powder. All of those colours are suitable. What I will say is if you're using a liquid colour, be very mindful if you add too much liquid, you're going to change the consistency of the glaze. I find gels to be best or oil based powders. I'm going to mix the glaze first so you can see the colour before I add in the white titanium. Bar Mix is the best stick blender to use because it tends to take out the air rather than incorporate it. But it is important that you don't actually pull the blade out of the glaze mixture, that you actually keep it under the glaze to avoid incorporating air. So you can see that's the base glaze colour which isn't a white base and it's browner than if we were to use neutral glaze. I am adding some white titanium, but if you wanted to do a marble cake with reds, pinks, purples, you wouldn't have to add any titanium to that base as a glaze. If you're wanting to make this into a dark glaze rather than a light glaze, you can add a small amount of cocoa powder. But you can also add some black colouring. I've got the titanium powder here, which is an oil based powder, and I'm simply going to sieve that in. It's always better to sieve it in and then it'll emulsify better and you're less likely to have lumps of the colour throughout the glaze. Titanium is a thickening agent, so keep that in mind. If you add too much of it, it can make your glaze quite thick and viscous. It's best to avoid bubbles at any time, but when the glaze is hot and very liquid like this, it's very easy to incorporate air bubbles. So don't spend too much time because once it reaches the correct temperature, or even a little bit below, because the movement of the bar mix will actually heat your glaze up, then try to get out all the air bubbles and you'll be much more successful. When you are giving the glaze movement to avoid air bubbles, you have to have movement on the surface of the glaze without taking the blade out. So just leave it underneath the surface, as close to the surface as you can without actually pulling it out. You can see the whole surface of the glaze is receiving movement as I lift the blade up and move it around. Once the glaze is cooled down, I'm going to do this again to eliminate the remaining air bubbles. At this stage, we're going to sieve the glaze and I'm going to sieve it into a jug. So it's easy to mix with a stick blender. It's easy to reheat if required. And I can also pour some out for the two different colours that we're doing. Now I've sifted the glaze, I'm going to mix two different colours. I'm going to make a purple and a pinky red colour to go with the white. Now when you're doing marbling and you're using white as a base, you have to have the predominant colour as white. So we're going to leave at least half white and then we're going to take a quarter and a quarter and make the two different colours. So to colour, I'm going to add the glaze into another jug. Firstly, we're going to do the red. It's really up to you how much colour you add, depending on the vibrancy that you're wanting to achieve. Of course, if you're doing pastels, you would add very little colour. If you're wanting really bold, vibrant colours, you would add a lot more. With the oil-based colour, it doesn't really have any impact on the consistency of the glaze, but water-based colours will. Next, we'll do the purple. You can use the same sieve. Once again, we're going to mix this to incorporate the colour. Yeah. 
We're going to mix a purple colour with exactly the same technique. Now that our colours are mixed, we're going to cool them down between 31 and 34 degrees Celsius before glazing the cake. Now you can glaze any shape or style of mousse cake, you just must ensure that it's frozen before you commence glazing. Now for glazing, I have a mat with sides so it's going to hold the glaze in. You can reuse the glaze, scrape it up, but obviously doing a marble colour means you don't have many options when you're remelting it, it will go grey. So I normally turn it into a dark glaze or a black glaze and then I can reuse it. When you reheat the glaze, you may need to add some more water just to adjust the consistency because every time you use it and heat it, we evaporate a little bit of liquid. So I have the right temperature for my glaze and because we're marbling, I've got a spare jug and I'm going to actually pour the different colours of glazes into the jug before pouring it onto the cake. So I'm going to start with the white as a base, so I'm going to pour the white in. I've got purple, so I'm just going to drizzle that in. White again, so we do white in between. I'm going to put some red in. So with glaze you always need a little bit of extra glaze so it covers the cake completely, particularly something like this that's in a ring shape so you won't have a lot of excess left over. Okay, we're now ready to glaze the cake. Make sure the cake is frozen, don't take it out too far in advance because you will get condensation on the surface. If you get a layer of water between the glaze and the cake, the glaze can actually slide off. So just rub your hand over it to get rid of any ice or frost that may be on the surface. Okay, now we're going to glaze. So we just give the tray a little bit of a tap. Once the gelatin starts to set, you need to immediately cut off any of the drips or excess glaze on the base of the cake and then place it on your plate or cake board that it's going to be served on. Now that the cake has stopped dripping, I'm going to pick it up and we just cut off the excess just with a straight knife. Now that we've cut off all the excess glaze, I'm just gonna place it down onto a plate. and then just slide the knife out. And there we have our finished marble glaze. Welcome to Savor Online Classes. Learn anywhere, anytime.
Subscribe now to get full access to our video library with new videos added every week.